Hello everyone and welcome to a new lecture in the topic of tachyarrhythmias in our ETG course. We remember from the lecture of approach to white complex tachycardia that we focused on regular white complex tachycardia with its possibilities of VT, its betuse apparency and antidromic ABRT and we discussed the algorithms that are used to differentiate among them. But we didn't speak about irregular white complex tachycardia. See, this is what we are going to do today. We are going to learn today the differential diagnosis of irregular white complex tachycardia and how to differentiate pre-excited AF from AF with bundle branch block apparency. So let's at first start to give the possibilities of white complex tachycardia. We know that we divide them into regular and irregular. And regarding the irregular white complex tachycardia, the first possibility that comes to our mind, of course, once we see irregular white complex tachycardia in our practice is pre-excited AF which is a very important diagnosis and a life-threatening disease. And there is polymorphic VT. We have AF with apparency, either left bundle or right bundle branch block apparency. And we have another less common possibility, which is itra flutter or itra tachycardia with bundle branch block apparency. And we know, of course, that flutter and itra tachycardia can present with irregular rhythm in case of variable AV conduction. Let's first see this ECG. We can see here, of course, that we have irregular Y-complex tachycardia. But, of course, we can notice that some of the RR intervals are extremely short, that some of them are just one large square. So the heart rate here may approach 300 beats per minute. This is a very malignant rate. So this ECG is very suggestive for pre-excited F. What do we mean by pre-excited F? In this diagram of the heart, we can see here that we have the AV node. The AV node is a transition between the atrium and ventricles and it is characterized by two important criteria, which is decremental conduction and AV delay. And this is a very important protective mechanism for the ventricle because in case of very rapid atrial rate, not the whole atrial rate is transmitted to the ventricles. But some patients may have something additional called the accessory pathway, which is like a pathway bypassing the AV ring and so it can transmit the impulse from the atrium to the ventricle apart from the AV node. And this pathway is characterized by two criteria which are no decremental conduction and no AV delay so it can transmit a very rapid atrial rate to the ventricles. And this access pathway is present with the patient since birth so it is considered to be something congenital. The problem is that this patient in sinus rhythm in most of the cases, he may be asymptomatic or sometimes he may develop AVRT, either orthodromic or antidromic, as we learned before from supraventricular tachycardia and Y complex tachycardia. But the problem is that this patient, when he developed paroxysmal AF, characterized by the presence of multiple wavelet reentries inside the atrium, resulting in extremely rapid and irregular atrial rate, most of these atrial rate would be transmitted to the ventricles, resulting in a very high and irregular ventricular rate. So the presence of accessory pathway with paroxysmal AF result in something called pre-excited AF. So this patient has AF, but the problem is that the presence of the AV node as a protective mechanism is overcome by the accessory pathway, which is a malignant conductive pathway transmitting most of these atrial rate to the ventricle. So now the question is, why shouldn't I call it AF with bundle branch block apparency? Maybe this patient has atrial fibrillation and because he has pre-existing bundle branch block due to structural heart disease, or sometimes he have rate dependent bundle branch block, which is more common to be right bundle, that's why he has irregular Y complex tachycardia and the measurement is different. Of course, the answer is simple. Here we can notice in these RR intervals marked by the asterisk that it is very short with the RR interval maybe here less than one large square. So the heart rate here is reaching about 300 beats per minute as the cycle length is about 200 milliseconds in some of the cases. And so this patient has extremely rapid rate and so this patient has a behavior of accessory pathway rather than a behavior of AV node. AV node cannot transmit this very rapid rate to the ventricle. Also, the varying complex morphology due to varying degrees of fusion beat suggests that this patient is not just AF with bundle branch block apparency. If it is AF with bundle branch block apparency, the complex morphology would be fixed. But here sometimes there is fusion beats between AV conduction and accessory pathway. What do we mean by this? For example, here, you can see also that the patient has extremely rapid rate and some of the complex shows slight variation of that morphology. What's the cause of this slight variation? 
As we know here, the presence of AF and accessory pathway result in this pattern. Some of the beats, of course, in patients with accessory pathway may be transmitted to the AV node at rest. Some of the beats may be transmitted wholly through the accessory pathway resulting in a wide complex because the conduction here does not pass through the Hesperkinji system. It passes through ventricular muscle fiber, which are very slow to conduct electrical impulse. And some of the beats are fusion between AV conduction and accessory pathway. In case of pre-excited AF, most of the complex are either sole accessory pathway conduction or fusion paint between the two pathways. And so this results in slight variation in the complexes in the patient with pre-excited AF but without change in the axis. And so when I say that the patient has wide complex acardia and it is irregular with extremely rapid rate and some of the RR intervals are very short, and also in this patient, the patient has slight variation in the complex morphology. Sure, it is not AF with bundle branch block, apparently. Let's see this example here. This patient also has a regular wide complex tachycardia, but here the complex morphology is fixed and the RR interval are not very short as we have seen in the previous example. So this patient has AF with left bundle branch block apparency, as here it is left bundle morphology, and it is not pre-excited AF. Why did we say this? Because the tachycardia has relatively longer RR interval, and this is a behavior of AV node rather than accessory pathway behavior, as we seen in the previous example, and almost a similar complex morphology. So here we don't have pre-excited F. We have AF with left bundle branch block apparency. Let's have the next question. What's the danger of pre-excited F? Of course, pre-excited F is a very high risk arrhythmia that can degenerate into VF. Why can you generate into VF? This very high ventricular rate with extremely short RR interval can result that some of the complex come in the vulnerable period resulting in RONT phenomenon. And this can result in ventricular fibrillation and cardiac arrest. That's why pre-excited F is one of the causes of sudden cardiac death in young population. And so it is very important to recognize and intervene rapidly to terminate it and then decide on the management or long-term treatment, which is mostly accessory pathway ablation, which is a percutaneous procedure. So don't miss pre-excited F. And of course, we have here a parameter called a shortest pre-excited RR interval, which is sometimes abbreviated as SPURI. What is SPURI? SPURI is the shortest RR interval achieved during pre-excited F. So when I see a strip of ECG, I can detect where is the shortest RR interval and calculate its duration in milliseconds. And so it is calculated by millisecond, not by feet per minute. And so it is considered a marker of the refractory period of the accessory pathway. As the shortest this index, the higher risk of ventricular fibrillation. Because within this index or this pre-excited RR interval is very short at the time, the risk of development of RONT phenomena is high, resulting in a higher risk of VF. And so sometimes accessory pathway are assessed in resting ECG by the shortest pre-excited RR interval. So remember, pre-excited F is very important to recognize because it can degenerate into VF and so it needs prompt diagnosis and termination. So, of course, some of you may ask another question and it makes sense. Is it a big deal if I managed any irregular Y complex tachycardia as pre-excited F? Why don't I do this? Because here, I would cover the possibility that if he is pre-excited AF, I have done the correct management. And if he is AF with bundle branch block apparency, I didn't lose a lot. No problem with this. But of course, the answer is not like this. This patient may be pre-excited AF, which is a very grave diagnosis, and maybe AF with bundle branch block, which is not a big deal, and he need just rate control and decide whether to cardiovert him or not, according to presence of left atrial appendage thrown by. So, what's the problem? If he is pre-excited AF and you correctly diagnosed him, so you will save the patient as you will give DC shock or IV procainamide. Because of course, IV procainamide and sometimes IV flaconide can slow down accessory pathway conduction and so he can save the patient. But if the patient is hemodynamically unstable or you don't have this medication, you should resort to DC shock in pre-excited AF. But what is the problem if the patient was AF was on the branch block apparently and you managed him as pre-excited AF? The problem is that this patient may have AF of more than 48 hours and when you give him DC shock, you have moved a thrombus from the appendage to the brain or to any other organ resulting in 
embolic events. So let's see this again. The patient has AF with 48 hours, you give him a DC shock, and here, when you get this shock, you mobilize the thrombus from the left atrium into the brain, for example, which is a very vital organ, and so this patient may develop cerebrovascular stroke. So this is a problem that if you diagnose or misdiagnose AF with apparently as pre-excited F and you gave him DC shock, the patient would lose. So please pay more attention to differentiate pre-excited F from AF with apparency. So remember, misdiagnosis of AF with apparency as pre-excited F may lead to inappropriate cardioversion with risk of thromboembolism if the patient was unfortunate and his AF duration was more than 48 hours. Let's see this example here. We can see here an irregular Y complex tachycardia. Slightly the heart rate may be not very tachycardic here. But we can see here that there is a pattern of P waves here that are present in between the complex. Sometimes there are three P waves in between the complex. Sometimes there are two P waves. So this example is a patient with atrial tachycardia with variable rate of AV conduction and right bond branch block apparency. And that's why he presents with irregular Y complex tachycardia. This is not a very common example, of course, you see in our practice, but remember that atrial tachycardia and atrial flutter as well can present with irregular Y complex tachycardia. Then to another possibility of irregular Y complex tachycardia, which is VT. Of course, the question is can VT be irregular? Of course, I can predict that you all answer yes, VT can be irregular. We remember from the lecture of ventricular tachycardia that ventricular tachycardia can be classified according to complex morphology into monomorphic, polymorphic, and pleomorphic. Monomorphic and pleomorphic can be irregular and showing variable morphology, and so they are presenting with irregular wild complex tachycardia. Not like monomorphic. Monomorphic would be regular with similar complex morphology. So, for example, here in this example, we can see a regular Y complex tachycardia with at least two or three complex morphologies. And so, this patient has pleomorphic VT, which is showing more than one distinct morphology during the same episode, but not continuously changing. And usually, it occurs with scar related VT. And here in this example, we have multiple and multiple complex morphology with slight change also in the axis and is continuously changing morphology and axis. And so it is polymorphic VT, and this usually occurs with acute MI, long QT interval, and electrolyte disorders. And we explained in the lecture of VT what's the difference between pleomorphic and polymorphic VT. And of course, we remember this famous example from the last lecture that here in this imaginary line, there is continuously changing in the axis, sometimes from negative to positive to negative again, and about 180 degree twist. And this pattern is called torsade de pointe, which means in French twisting of points. And of course, this is a very common and very critical pattern of VT that present with rapid and irregular QRS complex twisting around the baseline and it is a very high risk pattern that can result in VF and sudden cardiac deaths and so it is important to recognize and correct its predisposing cause of the long QT interval. And so VT can present with irregular Y complex echocardia from all these examples that we have mentioned. So of course many of you would ask me why shouldn't we call this pre-excited F not VT? And of course, it is a common question and it makes sense. We can misdiagnose this at pre-excited F, but I will tell you how to differentiate. Polymorphic VT usually show variable complex morphology and axis and put a line below the word of axis. Usually in polymorphic VT, as we know, it shows change in the complex morphology and axis and less pronounced irregularity. But in pre-excited F, there is complete variable complex morphology, but without significant change in the axis with more pronounced irregularity because of the atrial fibrillation. So the axis in the pre-excited F is usually the same because it is either accessory pathway conduction or hybrid or fusion piece between the accessory pathway and the AV nodal conduction. So the axis is usually the same, but the complex morphology is variable. And of course, the irregularity in pre-excited F is much, much more pronounced because of the chaotic atrial activity which is transmitted through the accessory pathway to the ventricle. So these are the two main differences that could help you to differentiate pre-excited F from polymorphic VT. 
So if we have this example here, the first is the G on the top. It is pre-excited F. We can see that the complex morphology may be variable, but it is just about two or three morphologies, and the axis is nearly the same. And we have some very short RR interval, and so it is extremely irregular. And in this example, there is continuous change in the axis. So it is polymorphic VT, and most probably it is on top of long QT interval, labeled as torsade de point, as the change in the axis is not a common feature in pre-excited F. Of course, the management in the ER may be the same. Both need termination the ER by IV medication, example procainamide. Procainamide can be used with pre-excited F and also it can be used with VT, although in pre polymorphic VT it may need magnesium sulfate. And of course, DC shock can be the end line of treatment for both types of arrhythmia. But differentiation is crucial for the long-term treatment. For example, patient with pre-excited AF, he may need a plan for accessory pathway ablation. And this is very important as a cure for his condition to reduce the risk of sudden cardiac death. Because when we ablate the accessory pathway and succeed in this, at the time I have aborted the chances for recurrence and the chances of having sudden cardiac death. Whereas in polymorphic VT, I need to search for the cause, which is in very common situation, it is long kitchen interval, so I need to check what is the reason. If it is congenital, for example, and the patient has polymorphic VT, I may need ICD. If it is acquired, so I need to check his medication history, his electrolytes, any comorbid conditions that can result in long QT. The patient may have acute MI. He may have other medications that resulted in this pattern, and so polymorphic VT has a different management. And for example, if the patient is has predisposing structural heart disease resulting in this correlated VT resulting in poly or pleomorphic VT, he may need an ICT. So the management on the long term is completely different in pre-excited from polymorphic VT. That's why you need also to do some effort to differentiate between them. So let's give a resume about the irregular white complex tachycardia from what we discussed before. Of course, we have four possibilities, pre-excited AF, we have AF with bundle branch block apparency, either pre-existing or re-dependent, we have itraflutter or itratachycardia with bundle branch block apparency, and we have polymorphic VT. Pre-excited AF, of course, is the most important one to focus on because it is a very grave diagnosis and it could result in VF and we need to differentiate it. AF with bundle branch block uh, blunt branch shock apparency, of course, is very important to differentiate from pre-excited F because it is a P9 condition that needs just rate control to control it. Polymorphic VT, of course, is one of the important causes of irregular Y-complex tachycardia, and we learned how to differentiate pre-excited F from polymorphic VT. And itrial flutter or itrial tachycardia with bundle branch block apparency, of course, is one of the important diagnoses, although not, not as common as the three, but it is one of the reasons for irregular white complex tachycardia. We remember, of course, this topic that in order to note here, because we are dealing with white complex tachycardia, sometimes in AF you can see this pattern, which is called the Ashman phenomenon, and we explained before why. Sometimes a premature supraventricular pate would come with right bundle branch block apparency. And Ashman pate, of course, would not, or Ashman phenomenon would not present with a regular white complex tachycardia, but sometimes you can have a supraventricular impulse with apparent conduction. It can appear in single pate or sometimes consecutive apparently conducted pates. So it may be confused with VT, but usually it is a non sustained pate, and so it can be easily differentiated from ventricular tachycardia and intermittent pre excitation. So just to note, Ashman phenomena may present with wide complex speed coming in a tachycardic rate, but of course they should not be confused with ventricular tachycardia and intermittent pre-excitation. At the end of our lecture, we understood today the differential diagnosis of irregular wide complex tachycardia, how to differentiate pre-excited F from AF with apparency, and how to differentiate polymorphic VT from pre-excited AF, and our article message Irregular white right complex tachycardia, of course, raises our attention to pre-excited F, which is one of the causes of sudden cardiac death in young individuals. And don't misdiagnose AF with bundle branch block apparency as pre-excited F, as this may lead to systemic thromboembolism with DC shock. It may need some time and some effort, but you can differentiate pre-excited F from AF with bundle branch block apparency. Thank you very much for your listening.